Hello. <laughs> So we are now moving on to chapter 4 on estimation of parameters. The first lesson under chapter 4 is confidence interval estimation of the population mean with known population variance. Our main objectives to hit for today are four. Identify the length of the confidence interval, computes for the length, computes for an appropriate sample size, and solves problems involving sample size determination. We also have three sub-objectives to hit, which is to determine the required sample size, assess accuracy of confidence interval estimates, and to construct a confidence interval estimator of the population mean when the population variance is known. Before going into the lesson, on your modules, there is an activity called Guess My Age or Guess Your Teacher's Age. So you can pause the video here and do the activity first before moving on to our lesson. For the first one, the single number, that's what we call a point estimate. Now, a point estimate is a numerical value and it identifies a location for a position in the distribution of possible values. The second one, it's the range of values. So your guess of my age could be between 20 to 30 or 20 to 40. And then you have there your confidence level or how confident are you between the given range of values. So let's say, for example, you're planning to guess all the ages of your SHS teachers. So in making inferences about that population, you can either provide a value or values for the parameter to evaluate a statement about the parameter. So this chapter will focus on the former, which is generally referred to as estimation. The first graph can be a representation of the point estimates given from number one. You have there a point estimate of 22, you have a point estimate of 23, so your point estimate. When we say estimator, it's the mathematical expression or formula. So what did you use as your estimator? You may probably use my voice or my facial features or the background that I have. Your estimate is the numerical value when you apply the estimator using the sample data. And then you have your second graph. This second graph can represent the confidence estimate. Each line represents an interval estimate that can be given from number two. You have there the interval estimate of 20 to 30, interval estimate of 25 to 30. So the width of the interval estimate or how shorter or how longer your segment is represents the accuracy of your estimate. The narrower the interval or shorter the segment is, the more accurate the interval estimate. In general, an interval estimator is constructed as follows. So your interval estimator is point estimate minus plus the product of your tabular value and your standard error of the point estimate. For the population mean, the point estimator is the sample mean. So ang gagamitin mo para ma-estimate yung population mean is yung sample mean. While the standard error of the sample mean will be used in the computation. Kasi nga, standard error of the point estimate. Next, how about pag population standard deviation ang binigay? For population standard deviation, the point estimator is the sample standard deviation. So, kung population mean, sample mean, population standard def, sample standard def. O paano pag population mode ng ginamit? So, ibig sabihin ang gagamitin mo is your sample mode, etc. So, I break, I broke, I broke, I broke, yes, I broke, I broke myself. So, I broke down the formula that I gave to you earlier. Now, you have your point estimate, which is the mean or the sample mean. Next, you have your tabular value and then your SE or standard error of the point estimate. Before we move on to tabular value, let's go first to SE. So your SE of the point estimate with a known population variance and sample size, the standard error of the sample mean is computed standard deviation over square root of n. So in tabular value, we have there Z sub A over 2. Usually, we use the notation Z a over 2 as a tabular value in the z distribution table whose area to its right is equal to a over 2. How do we get the tabular value of a 95% confidence interval estimate? So if you are 95% confident, first you need to compute for your alpha level or your level of significance. That's 1 minus your confidence level divided by 100%. So, mga nga rin dyan, magiging 1 minus 0 0.95. 
which is 0.05. Now, your alpha 11 or 11 of significance is going to be 0.05. So, you knowing that, so normal distribution, di ba, meron tayong left tail, meron tayong right tail, meron tayong two tail. Dito, our normal distribution is a two tail distribution. So, dito, yung alpha level natin, we're going to divide it by 2 because we have two tails. So, sa left, sa so right. You have the first one to the left, which is 0 0.025, and then to the right, which is also 0 0.025. Kasi nga, hinatin yung alpha level mo sa dalawang tails. The next step you're going to do is to determine or get your Z value from your Z table. So, looking at the Z table, we now have your Z value on the left, negative 1.96, and then your z-value to the right, 1.96. Looking back, we have the confidence interval estimate of the population mean when the population variance is known. You have this. You have your x-bar, which is your mean, as the sample mean. You have minus plus z, your z, tabular value, yung kinuha natin sa alpha kanina, and then you have your se. Your se is composed of population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, the square root of the sample size. So looking at this, this is not an interval when you first look at it. Okay? This is because your formula should be divided down into two. You have on the left, your sample mean minus your tabular value times the standard error of the point estimate less than your population mean less than sample mean plus tabular value, and then your standard error. Now, looking at this, pag kinumpute niya yan, ang lalabas is an interval. Notice that the symbol we used is less than, not less than, or equal to. This indicates that your extremes are not included in your interval estimate. So, in other words, it is exclusive. For example, if you have the confidence interval of 10, less than, mu, less than 20, Yung 10 and 20 mo are not included in your interval. So, exclusive of 10 and 20, pero between 10 and 20. Knowing this, the width of the interval estimate is the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit of the interval estimate. So, ang gagawin nyo dyan, kunin yung upper extreme nyo minus your lower extreme. Expressing it mathematically, we have this. X bar plus your tabular value times SE minus x bar or your sample mean minus tabular value times se doing it mathematically mga cancel ang sample mean ang matitira dyan is twice your tabular value and your se of the point estimate if you're just going to look at one value of your width that's what we call a maximum allowable deviation we use maximum allowable deviation or mad to see how large is the variability of the population so the larger the variability of the population the larger the maximum allowable deviation so ibig sabihin lang nun, if you have a larger maximum allowable deviation you have a wider confidence interval estimate you have a larger width Looking at this formula here, to have a smaller MED or maximum allowable deviation, to have a smaller variability of the population, looking at this, we are going to need a larger sample size. Now, this would lead to a smaller MAN, a narrower confidence interval estimate, and a narrower width. So, we started with confidence interval estimator, and then we moved on to width and then to maximum allowable deviation. Now we're moving on to the last one, which is the sample size. So if we're asked how many sample size is required in estimating the population mean under a simple random sampling scheme. So we're going to use your MAD, the formula for your MAD. So that's D equals tabular value times standard error. So sample size ang inahanap. Your sample size is denoted as N. So we're going to solve for n in that formula. You can pause the video here and see the process on how we get the formula for n. So a gentle reminder that we are halfway there. Alam ko, medyo magulo na siya sa uta kasi ang dami ng mga elements na diniscuss ko and ang dami ng mga dami ng, dami ng pinagsasabi ko dito. So chill lang tayo. We're halfway there. So being halfway, let's move on to the examples. Let's apply what we have learned to specific examples. The first one, we have there the weights of random 20 learners. So in kilogram to ha, so you have 40, 45, 46, 48 kilograms up to 66 
kilograms. To look for your confidence interval estimate, look for your sample mean or your point estimate and then your tabular value by looking at your alpha and then your SE of the point estimate. So here's the computation, point estimate. You add all of them and then get the average or do the trick with scientific calculators. That's 56.05. And then you have your tabular value. Alpha level mo, let's say you set it as you want to be 95% confident that the weights of the learners falls between this interval. So tabular value mo, 0.05. Kasi 1 minus 0.95 is 0.05. You want to have a two-tailed distribution. Now we're going to discuss for the next lessons on how to determine if you're going to use a two-tailed distribution, a right-tailed distribution, or a left-tailed distribution. So getting the tabular value of that, we have negative 1.96 and 1.96. The third one, we're going to compute for SE of the point estimate. Now the formula for that is sigma over square root of n. So we're going to look at the standard deviation. So we can manually compute for that as I discussed in measures of variation or measures of variability or use this scientific calculator shortcut. You can pause the video here and then follow the steps here to just get your standard deviation and variance. Keep in mind that there is a specific version of calculator that follows these steps. It may be different for your scientific calculator. Slide 22 na. Ha! Next, we're moving on to the last element, which is SE of the point estimate. So we have computed for the standard deviation as 7.3244. Instead of including the whole decimal, let's just include four decimals. So 7.3244. No need for the other numbers. And then your sample size, o oh, ilang learners ba yan? 20. So divide it. 7.3244 divided by square root of 20, you have 0 0.3662 hanggang 686. Approximate that to four decimal places again, we have 0 0.3662. Now, we're going to build our confidence interval estimate. So start with your point estimate, example mean, 56.05, minus plus your tabular value, you have 1.96, and then you have your SE of the point estimate, which is 7.3244 over square root of 20. 56.05 minus 1.96. The reason why it's minus, kasi we got the tabular value nung nasa left. Next, we have sa right naman, yeah, 56.05 plus 1.96. The reason why it's positive or it's plus, kasi we got the tabular value from the right. Ibig sabihin, 95% confident ka na yung weight nila is going to fall between 55.332248 and 56.767752. Moving on to the second example, suppose we want to estimate the true average. We could assume that the population standard deviation of the weight is 9 kilograms. How large should the sample be? Oh, gano ba kadaming respondents ang kukunin ko? If we want the estimate to be within 2 kilograms away from the true value, and that we are 99% confident of our estimate. So to do that, syempre, look at your formula on how to compute. You have the square of the product of your tabular value and your standard deviation divided by D. Okay? So looking at what we are given with, diba your confidence level is 99%. So your alpha would be 0.99. Zero 01 kasi 1 minus 0 0.99 is 0 0.01. Okay, next you have your deviation. So ang deviation natin, we want to know the deviations of each from the mean. So dito nakalagay na 2. So your deviation would be 2. Next you have your z, z value a over 2. Okay? So kung ang a natin ay 0 0.01, our a over 2 kasi we're going to divide it into two tails is going to be sa isa, sa left side, you have 0 0.005. Sa right side, you're going to have 0 0.005. So you're going to look at Z sub 0 0.005 sa table mo. That's going to be 2.575, positive and negative. Applying that to your formula, you're going to have 2.575 times 9 over 2, and then getting the square of that product you're going to need 134.3 students. Now, notice that I approximated it to 135 students kasi hindi naman tayo pwedeng kumuha ng sample size na 134.3. Hindi rin pwedeng 134 kasi meron tayong error of 0.3. So, just to make sure na 
talagang nakuha natin yung large of sample size, round up your value to one, to the next full number, which is 135. Okay. Moving on to your summary, I gave you three. I gave you the 1 minus 8% confidence interval on how to build that using your point estimate, tabular value, and standard error of the point estimate. And then you have your maximum allowable deviation. Next, you have your maximum allowable deviation, which is the, from the width of your confidence interval estimate. So, isa dun sa width mo. And then you have your required sample size given deviation. So, these are the formulas that you have to remember in computing for the following elements. Okay? So, before we close, do remember that an estimator, the reason why we estimate is because we want to be both accurate and precise. Accuracy is a measure of closeness of the estimate to the true value. And then you have your precision is a measure of closeness of the estimates to each other. Okay? You can be accurate but not precise. And then you can be precise yet not accurate. We also prefer the estimator to be unbiased. Kaya meron tayong mga confidence interval na 95%, 98%. It's because as much as possible in statistics, we want to limit bias. Bias is not the bias in your K-pop idols. Bias is the difference between the average value of the estimator, in example, the expected value of the sampling distribution, and the value of the population parameter. So that is it for chapter four under lesson one. It's a bit, we're moving on to a bit of a difficulty here in statistics. See you on the next lesson.